All right. Hope everybody had a uh, happy Easter. Uh, it's April 9th. My new DVD update right here. So pretty decent size. So let's get right into it. All right. First one is uh, the dollar DVD of the update. I have not gotten to watch this one yet, but it. Uh, I don't really know. Just by judging by what it's about and looking up short clips of it online, I'm don't really have a lot of hope in this one that I'll like it. But it's Sissy Spacek and Henry Winkler in Catherine. I love how Henry Winkler looks. In that. It also says Julie Kavner. I know she does the voice of Marge in The Simpsons, but I don't know. From what I've looked online about this one, it doesn't really look that appealing to me. It's like a 70s activism hippie type movie from what I've read. Uh, yeah, who knows, maybe I'll be surprised, maybe I'll watch it and I'll like it, but as for right now, not looking that good for that. Oh, this next one's a cool comedy I saw with Rodney Dangerfield. It's got a good cast, Rodney Dangerfield, Keith Gordon, Burt Young, Adrian Barbeau. I, I, really, I really enjoyed this one, it's Back to School, the extracurricular edition. I like Rodney Dangerfield, but I don't really own that many of Rodney Dangerfield's movies, but I, I think they're all good. I like them. This one shows Easy Money. I never saw that yet. I I like Rodney Dangerfield, though. I'm a, I'm a fan of Keith, Burt Young, you know, Pauly from all the Rocky movies. Keith Gordon, who was in Christine, then he went on to be a, a good director. Alan Metter, I don't know that director, but they, Robert Downey Jr. is in this movie, too. This is, this is a funny movie. I enjoyed it. I'm, one of my favorite scenes is when he's talking to the American history teacher, and he's like, uh, the, the teacher's a total douchebag. He's like yelling at him, and Rodney Dangerfield's just like, it's because, it's because Roosevelt was too much of a pussy to kick out those common bastards. Or, I don't know, something like that. It was, it was some funny line, I don't know. It turns into like a it turns into like a swim dive move, like diving into a pool. I, I don't know. Weird outcome to the movie, but I enjoyed it. Back to school. Now this next one, this has been among my favorite movies ever since I was the age of four. And it's John Cusack before he started going all serious in movies like 2012 and 1408. Who, seems that the only movies he does nowadays are four digit numbers. But this one was better off dead. This it's been one of my favorite movies since I was four. I every time I would, my dad would be sitting there watching TV, I would always come in and I we'd watch. Like if this was on TV, we'd always just sit there and watch it. This is awesome. I got the soundtrack to this movie too. I've had this movie on VHS for the longest time. I never got the DVD, and now I do. The VHS I got over there, and then I have the CD soundtrack over there. Kick-ass 80s songs by E.G. Daly and other people. It's weird though with this movie. Whenever me and my dad would be sitting there watching TV, he'd be flipping through the channels, and the, we'd see this on TV a lot. And every single time he'd flip to Better Off Dead, every single time he'd flip to that movie, it would always be on the exact same part of the exact same scene every single time we ran into it on TV. It was a scene where he's like hallucinating in the kitchen of the restaurant and the, the hamburgers singing Everybody Wants Some by Van Halen. Every single time this would be on TV when, and we clicked on it, always on that scene. And the same spot in that scene, it, it was really freaky how that always happened, but it was funny. This is funny. It's, it's, it's a comedy. It it's, makes me laugh a lot. What, what else? Who else is in there? John Cusack, David Odgen Steers, Diane Franklin, and Kim Darby. One of my favorite people in this movie was Ricky. I don't, I don't remember his name off the top of my head, but I know the guy in this movie that plays Ricky went on to create iCarly, which I do not watch, but... Interesting. Better off if you have not seen it though, definitely, definitely watch it. It's hilarious. I feel like I'm stuttering too much. Now this next one's a eighty and a cool eighties movie with a, a very, very young Charlie Sheen, Randy Quaid, then you got some other Clint Howard before he became the ice cream man. Uh let's see some other people again here you got Cheryl and Fenn. Don't know who she is, and Nick Cassavetes. He was the tattoo guy in The Hangover Part Two. If you saw that, 
Um, this it's a low it's a low budget action thriller from the '80s starring Charlie Sheen, Nick Cassavetes, or Nick Cassavetes, Sherilyn Fenn, and Randy Quaid, and it's called The Wraith. And it, this was a cool movie. It's got an awesome sound. I downloaded the whole soundtrack online. It's awesome, like high beat '80s music. It, Music performed by Ozzy Osbourne, Billy Idol, Robert Palmer. Then you got some other cool 80s. Like you got Stan Bush, Lion, James House, Tom Feehan, Fahan, I don't know his name. But yeah, it's something awesome. One of my, fa my favorite songs this are Never Surrender by Lion, Bad Mistake by James House, and Where's the Fire by Tim Feehan. It's awesome soundtrack. Ozzy Osbourne has a cool song too. It's like, it's like... Secret loser. Like when they're racing. This is like a half revenge, half action, half car racing. It's really cool to race. I know there was a better special edition DVD of it, but this one was ultra cheap, so I just bought it by Platinum Entertainment. I know Platinum does not really do a good job with their DVDs half of the time because I have Cage Terror, Hangman, Trick or Treat that Platinum released. and the releases suck. There is no, there are, there's no special features. There's all it is is when you turn on the menu. All it is is play, chapter selections. So that's all Platinum does with their DVDs. But yeah, what are you, what are you gonna do? The Wraith was very cool. If you like the '80s movie, like, well, '80s movie, but if you like um, action, like cars, fast-paced stuff like that, I would recommend it. If you like the music, check it out for the music. It's got an awesome '80s soundtrack. This next one's a 80s horror movie, low budget horror movie that I I found to be really cool actually. It's Bad Dreams. I I saw the trailer for this quite a while ago and I didn't know what to think of it. I, I was worried. this is one of the movies where I saw the trailer. I'm like, eh, this looks like it might be a pretty cool horror movie. But then on the other hand, it might really suck. So but Bad Dreams you got some cool people in there. You got I know by looking at this cover, seeing this hand, you might think it's a Knock off of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, which it is not. It's totally different than that. But funny thing about that is it stars Jennifer Rubin, who was in Nightmare on Elm Street Three: The Dream Warriors. She's the one who had like the heroin addiction. She like she had the big mohawk. That's Jennifer Rubin. She she does good in this. This I'm pretty sure that's her on the cover. But she doesn't really get a lot of dialogue in this. She she, she plays like a. A patient, and a, she she wakes up out of a coma. She's all, eh, you know, like psychiatric care and all that stuff. She really doesn't give. She really doesn't have as much of a personality in this movie as she did in Nightmare on Elm Street Three. Then you got Bruce Abbott from the Reanimator movies. I think that guy was in Richard Lynch. Richard Lynch, been he's like the B movie god. He was in AfterShock, Ground Rules, Invasion USA. Death Sport. Richard Lynch, he's a B-movie legend. He's been in all of those. Dean Cameron, I knew him. He's the, he's the guy from summer school that wanted to be the movie effects guy. Harris Eulin, I, I don't know who he is, but... Bad Dream, it's a cool 80s horror movie. If, if you haven't seen it, I mean, check it out. You could get this real cheap in this double feature with another movie called Visiting Hours. I, I haven't seen... I, I know nothing about Visiting Hours, but... Yeah, it's it's got this cool score by Jay Ferguson. It's like this... Uh, like, real gentle. Yeah, also, some scenes in this are really, really cool. I, Bad Dreams is a cool horror movie. If, you, if you're a fan of... If you don't like horror movies with a lot of comedy in them or anything like that, you just want to see it for the creepiness and for the horror and for the deaths, that, go to Bad Dreams. There's, a, there's this whole suicide feeling to it. It's Check it out. Bad Dreams, it's a cool low-budget horror movie. Now, this next one, I said that's a cool low-budget horror movie. Well, this is a cool low-budget action movie. Tons of action, nonstop. It, like, a real extensive storyline. It's American Commandos with... Chris Mitchum and John Philip Law. This movie has a lot of different... It almost felt like a collaboration of short films because the first half hour of the movie is almost like the movie Final Score and it's, it's Chris Mitchum, his wife and son get killed and he kills all the thugs that did it. That all happens in the first half hour and then it goes to this whole 
other story about Chris Mitchum and all these other Vietnam War vets get sent to this place called the Golden Triangle to, to wipe out this army of drug lords. It, it feels like a collaboration of short films. Like, you get the short film where Chris Mitchum gets his revenge for killing the family. Then you get this whole other story where him and all the Vietnam vets are going to the Southeast Africa to kill all the drug lords. I don't know. It's all one movie. It's not a collaboration. It just feels like that because of how the story just, like, switches like that. I guess it was just supposed to be an intro to Chris Mitchum's character, but... Yeah, American Commandos, it's really cheap. I got it on Amazon brand new for like seven bucks. John Philip Law, I really do not know much about him. But he's... He, I looked him up. Apparently he's really big in these action movies. Uh, besides him and Chris Mitchum, I knew no one else. I did not know the director, Bobby A. Suarez. But if you're a fan of action movies, do not watch this for the acting. The acting here... Hmm. But the, the action, there's tons of explosions, tons of martial arts, tons of da 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 boom, 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 just tons of action. The only, another problem with American Commandos is half of the time the movie is so dark. You can, like, there are some scenes outside, and there are other scenes when they're, like, in a bar, and it's so dimly lit, you can't tell what's going on. Uh, lighting that, yeah, that wasn't really that good, but check it out. I mean, the Vietnam vet-type action movies, it's cool, I it's cheap, so it's low budget. Don't expect that much out of it if you buy it, but definitely do check it out. I, I'd recommend American Commandos to action fans. Like, don't watch it for the acting. Don't watch it for quality because it's ultra low budget. Just watch it for all the explosions and ac action. All right, now these next three I know are in very, very high demand by the horror community. We got these. There are these three horror collection packs released by Lionsgate. We got the first one. That has eight movies. Got the second one, that six movies, and then the third one also has six movies. I've watched almost all of these. I've watched all eight of these. The horror, it comes with Waxwork, Nine Seven Six Evil Two, Ghoulies Three, The Unholy, Chud Two, Chopping Mall and Slaughter High, and Class of Nineteen Ninety Nine. Uh, Chud 2, I own that before I bought this set, but it's on bootleg, and it's really bad quality, so I'm glad that I was able to get it in this. Waxwork is pretty cool. I know, I know that's big released already, and I know there's a sequel to it. 976 Evil 2, pretty good, but I haven't seen the first one, so I, I, I don't know if I should, should have watched that first. Ghoulies 3 was pretty fun. The Unholy was... It was it was it was decent, but it was still kind of quirky. Chud too, I have fun with. Chopping Mall. I know a lot of people talk really highly of that. I mean, I thought it was okay, but I don't know. I, I can't really see myself watching that again. Same with Slaughter High. I, I, some about Slaughter High just made just made like I wasn't interested in it most of the time. I know it's a suspect, and the ending Miss Slaughter High just made me say like, really, really. I know it's inspired movies like April Fool's Day, but in Class of 1999, the cool post-apocalyptic type movie. These are all from the 80s, so. Yeah, but these are really rare. You can find these in certain Walmarts, but not all of them. Like, I know I saw it on Cool Duder's video. He was talking about that 8 movie pack. Everybody's putting in the comments. Apparently, people are going crazy. They're selling for like $30 online. People are going crazy trying to find these Lionsgate sets because... These movies were barely ever released elsewhere. The second one's got Blood Diner, Parents, Earth Girls Are Easy, Sundown, The Vampire in Disguise, Fido, and Boy Eats Girl. I've watched all these except for Fido and Boy Eats Girl. I, I just watched the 80s, and this one's from 1990. Randy Quaid's and Parents, that's a pretty funny movie. Earth Girls Are Easy was m way more comedy than horror to me. And Blood Diner, I, I, everybody talks about Blood Diner online. I think that's the reason most people are buying this one. Honestly, I thought Blood Diner was a piece of crap. I know everybody says it's fun, cheesy, not serious, but I mean, it, this is too fun. That, Blood Diner is crap. I, I didn't like Blood Diner. It's like this brain with eyeballs in a jar telling these two brothers to kill people. and It was weird. I, I didn't really care for that. And the last one's got Bride of Reanimator, Beyond Reanimator, Return of the Living Dead 3, Return of the Living Dead 4, Necropolis, 
Terror Living Dead 5, Rave to the Grave, and Night of the Living Dead 3D. Bride of Reanimator is decent. These two reanim Bride of Reanimator has Bruce Abbott from Bad Dreams that I just showed. I, do I don't think he was in... He wasn't in Beyond Reanimator. But I watched both of those. Bride of Reanimator I thought was decent, but you know, what do you expect as a sequel? Beyond Reanimator I didn't really care for. I do like Jeffrey Combs, though. He's a good actor. I liked him in Fortress. Return of the Living Dead 3, eh. the first two were fun, Return of the Living Dead 1, 2, this one's getting to the level where it's just decent as a film, Necropolis, that one was a piece of crap, Rave to the Grave, piece of crap, and I didn't even watch 3D yet, so I know Sid Egg's in it, I met him at the convention this past summer, I don't know, but yeah, I know those... You could buy them in the $5 bins at Walmart, which is where I found all three of them, and I just bought them all right away. Went back there like a week later, and they weren't there. I dug all the way to the bottom, there weren't any there. And seeing online, people are wanting these things like mad. I, I even saw this 8-pack. I saw this one on eBay. Someone was selling it for like $69.99. $70 for this. I can't believe that. You bought it for $5. Who's going to pay $70 plus shipping and tax online for this? Yeah, you, you got to think about these things if you want to get it sold. Because I, I know no one in this right mind who's going to go out right now and say, Oh, man, i got to get all those movies for, you know, I could go to my Walmart right now and see if they got it for 5 bucks, But do I want to just play it safe and be lazy and just go online and get it for $70? And the last one I got, I got into watching this show in the weirdest way. I'm in the wood shop, and my high school is my class elective. My wood shop teacher, I, I'm, a, I'm a good student in the wood shop. I got an A. I always ace all my wood projects. Like, I'm really good in the wood shop. I'm really handy with that kind of stuff. I'm one of the better students in there. I'm always getting good grades on the metal and wood and all that kind of stuff, all the projects we make. And for whatever reason, my teacher decides to give me the nickname Chumley. <laughs> he nicknames my friend Nick, old man. This girl in my class, Rachel, peaches. And he names me Chumley. And we all call him Big Hoss. And so, so we, we nicknamed my friend Josh Antoine, but that's a whole other story. And saying the characters, you probably know, but how he gets the nickname for me, since I'm not a klutz in the wood shop, I'm always doing everything good. I'm always using all the safety stuff. And Pawn Stars, this first season. I really got it. After he started calling, I wanted to see what he was talking about, so I looked up a video online, and Chum Lee came up. He, he had, they had this bowling machine, like this huge bowling model arcade game. He throws the ball. He shatters the game. I'm this guy. Chum Lee's not even on the cover of Old Man, Rick, and Big Hoss. This is a good show. It's on the History Channel, but even though I know a lot of you saying, oh man, that history, I don't want to learn about old antique guns and stuff. You just watch the Antique Road Show for that. I mean, this show adds a lot of comedy and backstage stuff. Like, when they're not selling something, they're always pulling some weird bets. Like, season one, there's this episode where they get all pissed because the guy buys a boat and he, uh, they, they don't except boats or something like that, and they got all pissed off. And that, I saw this other episode on TV where they were having a football challenge, trying to throw the football through the tire. It, Pawn Stars is an entertaining show. It, it adds comedy, it adds humor, it adds more to just learning about simple guns. If it was just learning about guns and antiques, I wouldn't be watching it. As I should just watch the Antique Road Show for that. So, I, I, this is the only History Channel DVD I know. <coughs> gotta be careful with these dvds though sometimes because sometimes like when you're copying a tv show tv show dvds can be bootlegged real easily i think this dvd's real but i'm not quite sure see i got a buddy that knows a lot about this kind of stuff and so we'll give him a call to find out if these dvds in the set are official well mr Shimosen, this disc is in perfect condition i mean it is perfect the artwork seems to be very precise it's not the thin paper stuff. It's not just pasted on. The artwork again is just very, very precise. And even the barcode on here matches on the case perfectly. 
It's not finessed. It's not fake. It's absolutely 100% legit. And judging from the artwork, judging from the barcode, judging from the condition of the disc, it's perfect. And it'll be valued about $11. Thank you. All right. Well, I know I made a good deal with this then. All right. Now the little recap for this update. We got season one of Pawn Stars. Definitely going to keep buying those seasons in the future. Uh, the horror collection with these six. Bride of Reanimator, Beyond Reanimator, Return of the Living Dead 3, Return of the Living Dead 4, Return of the Living Dead 5, and Night of the Living Dead 3D. Blood Diner, Parents, Earth Girls are Easy, Sundown, The Vampire, and Retreat, Boy Eats Girl, and Fido. Waxwork, 976, nine, Evil 2, Ghoulies 3, The Unholy, Quest 1999, Slaughter High, Chopping Mall, Chud 2. High demand for those. So. American Commandos. Bad Dreams. The Wraith. Better Off Dead, one of my favorite movies of all time. Back to School. And Catherine. 